Happy New Year to all of you. Happy New Year 2024 to all my Substack subscribers to Fool's Gold, Confessions from an Educated Fool. It's Donald Earl Collins here, subscribers, paid and unpaid. Um, I've been on a nice, uh, somewhat restful at times, stressful break, but I'm back. I'm back to writing. I'm back to thinking about the issues of the day and so on and so forth. And so I just want to spend a few minutes elaborating on my latest substack regarding Claudine Gay and Harvard and the reaction to it. And to be honest with you, it really bugs me. You know, one of the key themes to, you know, the substack about being a fool, an educated fool, isn't just about American racism or dealing with students or dealing with my white colleagues or anything like that. A lot of it's dealing with the black literati, the black intelligentsia, the black elite in academia and in other elite circles um, in the U.S. and my dealings with them over the years. And what I find puzzling, what really burns me is that they are so quiet on so many issues related to black folk. I don't mean Black Lives Matter or when someone gets shot and wounded and murdered by the police, you know, black, you know, police lethality and those kinds of issues. I mean more like everyday kinds of things, right? You know that other colleagues are going through it. They're going through the conflict. They're going through shit, right? You've got adjunct professors and term faculty members and junior faculty members who are probably not going to get tenure or probably not going to be permanently hired at these elite white institutions and you say nothing because you're so worried about keeping your job that you do not exercise any authority, do not use your voice, do not use your words, do not use your ability to write and think in any way to help those people. It's really all about you. What does that have to do with Claudine Gay? Uh, it has something to do with it, right? I mean, there's this essay that hit um, MSNBC today, um, MSNBC yesterday, I think, by um, the black feminist um, Coretha Mitchell talking about know your place um, aggression, which is a form of microaggression, talking about essentially how you know, President, former President of Harvard, Claude Gingay, had faith, you know, ran into this gauntlet because of what she did in front of Congress last month, or was it, I guess now almost, you know, going on more than five weeks ago, um, that led her to be over, you know, hyper scrutinized by conservative white donors and white members of the board of, of Harvard's board, <laughs> right? And eventually lose her job because she mis you know, didn't properly cite or cite at all sections of something from undergrad or graduate school or whatever, right? And we know that that wasn't about whether she cited sources properly, didn't know the difference in MLA, PA, Chicago style, whatever. We know it wasn't about that. We also know that it wasn't about you know, her milly mouth answer um, in kind of Congress about what anti-Semitism is. It's really about her, and really about any black elite person's rise in academia, particularly at predominantly white institutions, and how they rose, right? The truth of the matter is, you know, yes, Mitchell's right. She faced know, know Your Place aggression, and this is the result of her having been forced to resign um, to fall on one sword over something that had very little to do with you. But there's an and part to, and an and and a but to that. The and is the fact that she also, she must have faced this throughout her entire time, rising in political science, rising in the circles of, of um, at Harvard and in other places, um, in terms of getting her degrees and all those sorts of things. This would not have been hardly her first, probably her 10,000th time even, of, <laughs> of facing know-your-place aggression. Because anybody black who's done anything in life, you know, that's a measure of success, so to speak, has faced know-your-place aggression. Shoot, walking your dog in a white neighborhood and you happen to be a house owner or renter in that neighborhood can get you know-your-place aggression because you're literally out of place, right? So I think that she's already faced that. This would not have been anything new for 
Gay or Caritha, Car, Car, yeah, Caritha Mitchell or any or me or anyone else black, particularly black man, man or even more particularly black woman to face. This would have, this is nothing new, right? But there's a but here. Because you've been successful in fighting those kinds of aggressions off, maybe not even fighting them off, you're sort of placating your primary role in moving forward, you know, getting tenure, getting published, you know, raising money, getting prestige, being able to move, shift from being a faculty member to being an administrator to being a major league administrator at an um, Ivy League institution requires the ability to placate white people. <laughs> it does. On some level, they have to be comfortable enough with you to know that you are not going to wield power in ways that are so radically different than anybody else has come along that they are willing to vote for you or willing to hire you or willing to promote you to different kinds of positions. You simply, they're not, they're not going to let just anybody come into these jobs who has a PhD, who happens to be black, who happens to be a black woman, just suddenly move all the way through these ranks. No, they're going to need somebody who on some level is not particularly threatening to them. You know, you might have threat, you know, your research might have some potential to threaten. Your rhetoric might have some potential to threaten. But when it comes right down to it, it's blunted by your willingness as an individual and willingness within the system as black faculty and black administrators are concerned to be able to go, yeah, I say all these things, but I'm not really going to rock the boat that much when I take this particular position as a dean or as a provost or as, you know, a president of a university or something along those lines. Now, sometimes, you know, you might make a few changes here or there, but ultimately, you're not going to take this institution and make it a predominantly black one. You're not going to be out there marching with, you know, that pro-Palestinian rally, rallies going, yes, this is a form of oppression. Yes, the university should divest from Israel. Yes, the university should um, actually be part of BDS and boycott all of this stuff. That's exactly what Claudine Gay didn't do. That's exactly what a lot of folks don't do in their positions of, a, of relative authority and power. However limited it may be, you do have some. And your fact that you're not willing to exercise any of it in support of such activities or sort of hedge your bets about what, you know, about what free speech is, what free speech isn't, what anti-Semitism is, and the difference between being anti a nation state that's pounding the shit out of people and killing people, destroying cult, you know, destroying all symbols of their society and culture, <laughs> and being completely silent about that while going, we need to protect Jewish students from anti-Semitism, which you do, by the way, you do need to do that, but never, no university ever does enough of it, to be perfectly honest with you, right? This is an and, but this is an and both here, right? In this particular case, you need to do both. But you're not really willing to do the hard work of protecting folks that other people would otherwise revile, while simultaneously protecting people that really do also need protection too, right? And her inability to address that in a concise way, even with the help, presumably, of a staff that works for the president's office that would have probably, perhaps there were talking points around dealing with far-right lunatics who don't know you know where anti-semitism begins and their white supremacy um ends right <laughs> should have been able to deal with this fairly easily but they weren't able to white woman black woman white guy couldn't deal with it at all in congress and that's really what this comes down to for me right is the inability of folks you know particularly elite black folks and elite white institutions to really speak any truth to power at all beyond, you know, I'm going to write about some of this stuff, but I'm going to write about it in such a way that it's really not that threatening to the institution as a whole. It doesn't threaten to change the institution in any way. It doesn't threaten to dismantle the institution in any way. That's why I quoted Audre Lorde. Right? The, you can't dismantle a master's house with the master's tools. You're working with the construct. You're working with the construct of American racism by being very much a part of the system. And Claude Yin Gay's limited six months of tenure as president of Harvard, particularly around these issues, 
demonstrates that. It fully demonstrates that. And though I mean, I'm not saying she deserved to be forced to resign or should have been fired. That is not it. I think, in a matter of fact, I think she should have kept her job until they forced her out by actually firing or make them fire you, right? And go out the door while they're doing it by actually taking definitive positions on issues that she should have been doing that right from the get-go. But she didn't do that. And because she didn't do that, and because there are so many of you who are unwilling to do that, is why I'm holding all of your feet to the fire. Here you are complaining about all this crap, all this shit that's going down. And yet, there's so much other shit you should be complaining about, should be raising awareness to, should be protesting with your students and with other people in social justice realms about, but you won't. Because you just too much money at stake. You know you part of your job includes placating white people, placating white people with money. And so that's, well, there are limits to what you're doing, and obviously there are a lot of things you just simply won't cross the line and do because of it. So, sigh, big sigh. It's disappointing.